Welcome to Bob Pop, sitting on the dock of the bay in Annapolis, Maryland, Athens of the East, sailing capital of America, filming the inaugural episode of On the Road. Hello, everyone. Welcome to On the Road with Bob Paff, America's show. I'm your host, Bob Paff. We're going to introduce you to great people, places, and things, starting today with Annapolis, Maryland. Join me as we meet with merchants, discover amazing food and interesting people. Ernie's getting really impatient back there. we got to get on the road. You're going to love Annapolis, and I know you're going to put it on your list as a destination. Let's go. Fred, what an excellent way to start the show, and thank you for that proclamation. It really touches my heart. I really appreciate that. Well, nobody deserves it more than you do, Bob. What a great way to kick off the show. So you are the town crier. You're the guy we want to talk to when we get into the history of Annapolis, and I want to dive right into that history. Tell us some of the highlights that we need to know about Annapolis that you might be surprised to hear about Annapolis. Well, one of the things that nobody should ever miss is that state house. It was the capital of the United States of America, from 1783 wow. till 1784. It's where George Washington, His Excellency, where he resigned his commission at the end of our revolution. He refused Reward. to be the king. They wanted him to be the king. The Continental Congress was sitting in the old Senate chamber. It's also where the Treaty of Paris. That end the Revolutionary War, is that it right? Ended the Revolutionary War. It's oh. where it was ratified. And that's where my dear friend, the gladiator of the quill, <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, was made the minister to France. They'll go to Paris and join Dr. Benjamin Franklin and John Adams as a diplomat in Paris. So the capital is the oldest working capital in the United States. It's also the only capital that was not only the state capital, but the nation's capital we talked about. Absolutely, you're correct. You've got, we've got four signers, four, I think, of the Declaration of Independence that have homes still standing in Annapolis. Absolutely, you could go into three of them. Uh, one is a private home. Wow. Uh, the last signer that died lived here in Annapolis, and that was Charles Carroll of Carrollton. We also have Samuel Chase, William Paca, and Thomas Stone. Incredible. Squire Fred, listen, thank you so much. Thank you for that proclamation. Now, we really need to go and see the town and show everybody what Annapolis is really like. Folks, you do not want to miss Annapolis, Maryland, and Squire Fred. Hey everybody, Annapolis is a walking town. We're on one of the most beautiful streets in Annapolis. It's called State Circle. The state capital, the oldest working state capital in the United States is just to my right. But a trip to Annapolis is not complete unless you go into the Annapolis Pottery. I fell in love with this tour. I can't get enough of it. Let's go inside and talk to the owner, Melanie, right now. Everybody, we're here talking to Melanie Murphy, who owns the Annapolis Pottery. What a what an amazing shop this is! Thank you. I mean, Thank this you. Is not, we, we like when it. When I walked in here, I got to tell you, I fell in love with the place. Why a pottery store? This fit my background, which was retail. I love to entertain. I love to cook. I okay. love to create. So this checked so off a lot of your boxes. Checked a lot of the boxes. Right. What I love is it's regional. You've got local artisans. We're a gallery, but we're not a gallery because what we specialize in yeah. is functional pottery. It's to be used every day. Folks, I know you're learning some things. I didn't know yeah. the term functional, functional pottery. pottery. What so, is functional pottery? Well, so functional pottery is for food, cooking, those kind of things. Okay. Um, things you use versus something that's more sculptural. It's beautiful. You, you can want people touching it and picking right, it up and baking it, with it. But we want people to pick it up because everything has a different feel. The energy that gets put into yeah. it through throwing on the wheel or the hand building and then the glazing. You know, the artist's love and attention, thought went into it. Energy. I'm an energy guy. Right? It transfers. Does it really? It does. When you pick wow, it up okay. and how you feel it, it yeah. makes a difference. You know what? 
Show me around. Okay. Let's see let's some do other it. stuff. All right, All right, let's go. Melanie, this store is absolutely. Oh, I know, isn't it? You know, this is. Look at this. I mean, you're you know, talking to a seafood things. guy here. Yep. This is. Tell me a little bit about this story. This wall right here. This, this is Donna Tui out of Baltimore. Okay. And a she, Baltimore she's a perennial love favorite. It. People love this. Really? So they come back year after year. These are based on her garden that she wow. has, and then of course the perennial crabs. It's fun. It's really I think beautiful. that, you know, people yeah. connect to it. You're gonna find pieces here that you're not gonna find everywhere. So make sure on your trip to Annapolis, you stop by and see Melanie, talk to her, and just look at some of these beautiful pieces, and make sure you take one home with you to remember your trip to Annapolis. We're at Preserve Restaurant right on Main Street, and I've got the pleasure today to talk to, I would call him the number one fan of Annapolis, and that's Mayor Gavin Buckley. So, Mr. Mayor, thank you for joining me and taking time out of your busy day. I want to talk to you about your vision for Annapolis. You've got a big plan. You've got a lot of stuff going on at the city dock. Let's talk about that a little bit. So I think we're on the cusp of being one of the cachet cities in the country. I think that a lot of people have realized that they can move to beautiful cities like Annapolis, have a great lifestyle and still get their jobs done, still get to an international right. airport if they need to, still drive into DC or Baltimore or the bigger cities if they have to. This city, you can go to work on your boat, you can come in. You, how do you get to work? You, I can get in on my boat, I can come in on my bike, I can come in on my Vespa, I have a great life. So I came to America on a 32 foot boat from Africa. So I sailed across the wow. ocean. So you know, I have a passion for the water, um, but this city is surrounded by water and that's what makes it so special. You're not, I'm, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. You're not a politician. Yeah, I don't see myself as a politician and I think more small business owners should get into politics because we wow. see things a different way. We only spend what we make, right? So we realize that you can't go over your budget. You have to be creative on the way you finance things. Yeah. Uh, this $70 million project that I'm describing to you 70 million. is the largest municipal project in the city's history and it is not going to cost the wow. local taxpayer $1. You have to wear a lot of hats. We're sitting here with the CEO of Annapolis. Chief Executive Officer is how it's written in the charter. We are gonna create a world-class park and raise City Dock six feet. And that's on top of three feet. So we're all trying to build our city to eight or nine feet to really be ready for what's coming at us. So it's not only that climate change or, or, or the water rising and all that kind of stuff. It's just going to make things more functional. You're putting in a garage, I believe, down there. The flow of traffic is going to be better because it can get a little congested down there at the city dock. It's a huge project. When's it going to break ground? We break ground on the new garage, which is how we're going to pay for it. So we're okay. going to do a private-public partnership on our very lucrative garage. We're going to ground lease that to a company. That's going to throw off enough money that we can reimagine City Dock and build a, an amazing public space there that is a barrier against sea level rise. But it's not just about sea level rise. You know the catastrophic weather events that we're experiencing in all the cities right. throughout the country. The initiative I'm talking about would have protected the historic district against Hurricane Isabel, which was one of our most catastrophic weather events. Mr. Mayor, what's the most rewarding thing? I hear about you and I hear that you're out on the street and that's what I love and that's what I think we need more of in politics, really. And so what sets you apart and what do you love the most? I think you have to lead by example, so I try to ride my bike into work as much as possible. I'm always on Main Street, I'm always in one of the different districts in the city. I'm pretty visible and so I talk to people a lot and that's what's great about being a mayor. It's not so political. People don't really care about the Republican Democrat thing, you know, they care about you getting your job done and you fixing the basic things, but also about where you're taking the city. We're taking the city in a great direction. So everybody's got to be on board. It doesn't become a partisan issue. It's not a political issue. Everybody's got to be behind small business and the economic growth of this city. And you've got some incredible partners here. You've got the Naval Academy. We've got our friends over in Eastport. I think that's what brings a lot more credibility to our initiative, that our most important partner is the US Naval Academy, because we have the same interest. They have to protect the university. They have to. We have to protect the historic district. And then we have to move on to the other 16 miles of coastline that we've got to work out a way of how we're going to protect those residents and those homes. I could talk to this guy all day, but we need to move on. We need to show you the rest of Annapolis. Mayor Gavin Buckley, what an honor. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great Appreciate being with it. You. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.
Hey everybody, I promised you when we started our adventure that we were gonna introduce you to interesting people, take you to great places, and let you taste some good food. We're at the Boatyard Bar and Grill in Eastport, just over the bridge from downtown Annapolis proper, and one of the places that is a favorite of Jimmy Buffett. Michelle Obama's been here. What makes this place so special? What makes Maryland seafood so special? Look at these crab cakes. Let's talk about that for just a second. All lump crab meat, no filler as they say here in Maryland, so it's all meat, folks. The shrimp, everything. What makes it special? It's the spices, it's the flavor, it's the secret ingredients that Marylanders say that you can get that make this food absolutely delicious. You cannot come to Maryland, you cannot come to Annapolis, you cannot come to Eastport without trying Maryland seafood. You're gonna wanna try the Boatyard Bar and Grill when you come to Annapolis. I'm gonna dig in right now. Take my word for it, this stuff is unbelievable. I'm gonna clean this really quick. We're gonna rip this shell off of here, show you how it's done, all right? Twist that tail a little bit, dip it into there. We take a bite of this. Mmm, look at that. You gotta have this beer to wash it down, folks. Cheers. Hey everybody, welcome to the Severn Sailing Association. It's another must do when you're in Annapolis. Annapolis is known as the sailing capital of the world. I've got Commodore Eric sitting next to me. So we've got the current Commodore and then we've got the former Commodore Kim here, but we wanna talk about this program. We wanna talk about the Severn Sailing Association, what's going on behind us with these mm -hmm. kids out in the water. Severn Sailing Association was founded in 1954. We were fortunate enough to get this point of land here and we've always been a one design sailing racing club. Many of the boats that we sail here at Severn Sailing Association, that they're, they're smaller, a lot of dinghies, which are much more manageable. We have a lot of very skilled adult sailors here, but we also have a very active junior program. Which is what's going, going on. going on in right? the background. Yeah. Um, these are high school sailors. So mm -hmm. we talked about barriers to entry. So this is the kind of thing that you don't have to start when you're three years old. Oh. You can come in and be an old guy like me or whatever. You can be somebody who has no exposure. You can live in the Midwest and really be in a landlocked state it's or whatever, and, and you can get into sailing if you want to. Yeah, I learned to sail in the Midwest. You did? Yes. See, there we go. And he's a Commodore. Yeah, yeah totally. So folks, there's, there's hope for you yet. So if you've never been sailing, so yeah, my, gotta, my, we're gonna be maybe the social mm -hmm. aspect, a big social part of it as well. Yeah, we're, we're a very social club. We have a frostbite sailing here every Sunday during throughout what the winter. Is, what is that again? Tell frostbite again? sailing. Frostbite in, sailing. In lasers, a little one person. We have the fire, <laughs> fire pit out in the parking lot afterwards for people to warm up and, uh, and oh a, lot of, a lot of socializing and camaraderie. And you talk about the camaraderie, I think one thing that's really special is people are really helpful and supportive of each other. When new people so do come So you don't in. have to be intimidated not then, at right, all, to come in here, because that's those barriers of yeah. entries that I talked yeah. about. Yeah, having and, more and people and more... It is intimidating, yeah. but it's good to hear that you can get into this if you want to, because yeah. I gotta believe mm -hmm. you guys love it. And that's really what this association's about. I'd say we love sailing and we want to share it with more people. You guys, there's so much to talk about. First of all, you know, I want to thank Forward Brewing for our, our drinks right here. It's a, right over here in Eastport, and so we want to thank uh, all those folks over there who gave us our, our beers here and it's a, it's a chilly day I gotta tell you guys but they're telling me it's great sailing weather yeah. so uh, thanks for being with us and get out there and try your hand at sailing Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me for this first show on the road with Bob Path in Annapolis, Maryland. Keep an eye out because we're gonna be coming to a city like yours anytime now, showcasing great people, places, and things. Keep an eye out for this Wagoneer because you never know when we're pulling in to your town. Thank you so much.